cover crops mean full crops for the wild birds, plus the pheasants that have dodged and weaved their ways past the waiting guns. But this sweet corn honeypot means there is still sport to be had for Crow and Cousin Gary long after the pheasant season is finished. That's hot. You've got ripe over the back, just over the back of this wood. Got an old pheasant cover crop here. I've mowed some of it off. And you can imagine, it's quite a lot of maize here. A few pigeons feeding on it. The problem is when you go on the boat, as soon as you have a shot, they're straight out here. So couple of people on the rope today and uh, me and plus one are here. Crow has been watching this field with anticipation for a while and a bright cold day gives him his first opportunity to have a go at the pigeons. They tend to come up through here and this is where they're going to come back through. We've got some decoys up the tree there low down if you get down a bit further you get a better picture of them David. Yesterday and the last few days because it's been so windy the pigeons have been sitting down low in the trees Keeping out the wind because it has been really windy up through here. See how we get on. We've got, well, we've got a dozen or so so that far. You wouldn't want to drive your car out in that field up there, would you? When do you decide to use lofters and when not? This time of year, I quite like using them as much as possible. It's just something else for, to attract their attention. So as, mu as much as I can through the winter, I will use them. Um, if they're committed to a field, it's, it, 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 you don't need them so much. But with this, they're they are, they're coming to this field, but I just want to try and, I'll put the decoys between us to try and draw them to us. Gary's daughter's with us today, Ellie. Um, she's going to shoot a few, so we're hopefully going to leave a few to come up in the tree so she can get a bit of practice coming up into the tree. Um, some nice, easy ones, that's what we're hoping anyway, so. Which one were you on? The other one. Crow has positioned the hides to optimise his and Gary's chances of getting in touch with the flight lines. The lack of leaves on the wood behind means they have an early warning system in place, picking up the birds as they fly over and into the field. The birds come in fits and starts. Because Andy has done his homework, he knows that if it's likely to liven up, it's going to be after lunch. If he hadn't done his homework, he'd be thinking about packing up about now. Come up about this time yesterday, there was nothing here. Quite a simple thing, good. And they were all out on the right. Um, but then I come back yesterday afternoon and there was uh, close on a thousand pigeons here, between 800 and a thousand pigeons on this field. So, um, like I say, we looked early, nothing here. Um, so hopefully we're not going to, we're not going to write it because I know they've been feeding there. So um, the thing is, with maize, it don't take them long to get a crop full. It don't take them long to get a crop full, so they know they can come in and get a crop full a bit quick. As he hopes, the shooting does improve, but there are no easy pickings. Everything is at range, and the game boar shells chip away at the branches as most birds seem to be in a shootable spot above us and not in front. Only one of the birds we shoot has anything in the crop, and that's a light meal. Got a lot in them. A bit of clover. Yeah, a bit of clover. A little bit of maize. That's it. Have all what we shot. That's the only one we're it's crop. It has been a starter with no main course today for Crow, but still he gets 80 plus birds, and they will definitely be back on this high protein X cover crop. <laughs>